Hello and welcome to episode 27 of Let's Play Planet Coaster Project Globe Explorer here on Theme Park Worldwide. In this episode, I'm going to be working on the third set of accommodation here at the Atlas Adventure Resort. And if you haven't guessed already from the title, it's going to be a Chinese themed hotel. Um, so it's going to be built in the bottom left um, part of the park. Uh, of course, it's going to feature wonderful views out to the countryside at the front of the hotel and the the back is going to look over the park, um, all the Spanish accommodation that I built in the previous episode uh, that I'm going to be naming um, shortly as well, so stay tuned for the name reveal for that one and the storyline. And uh, yeah, you're also going to get some great views looking towards the theme park itself. So um, yeah, it's going to come together really nicely. Uh, as you can see, I'm going to be covering up that white building um, that I put in quite a while back. Uh, the idea is uh, that this hotel um, was real at a theme park, it would have a station inside for the monorail and also a, uh, a station for the uh, cable car that passes through it there as well it's also going to have a boat station uh, out the back so it's very well connected it's got three forms of transportation uh, and it's also got pathways that are going to lead to the spanish accommodation and also the main entrance to the theme park and all that entertainment area so um, yeah it's a very well connected hotel this one uh, in terms of in the game i'm not going to build a monorail station um, or a cable Cable car station inside there, uh, mainly because um, I don't think that uh, it's, it's needed really for guests in the game um, because you know they're not going to need that to transport them around. However, uh, there is actually going to be a uh, rooms inside this one, much like the luxury hotel that I built, um, the first one with the British theme. Uh, I am actually going to put the rooms in here for guests in the game to stay in. It's not just going to be um, to look like a hotel, like the Spanish uh, one, that will the lodges that I built in the previous episode. It's going to actually function uh, as a hotel, this one. It's not just decorative. Um, so, yeah, we'll later on work on the uh, putting in the, the, the rooms in there and deciding on which ones we want to put in. In terms of the uh, exterior, it's all about just building it up and in layers and, and that's the thing with this game i get a lot of people commenting saying sean you know how do you do such a good job with buildings and how do you know where what walls are going to go where and how this piece of roof's going to go in the the answer is i don't i just play along with it see how it goes you'll see me sometimes pressing the undo button um because we all get things wrong sometimes and think actually that doesn't look right and you know every planet coaster player out there um gets things wrong at, at times it's all about experimenting so if you are just learning the game and i know a lot of people uh, have been downloading it because of the lockdown uh what's been going on um, yeah, you just got to put the time into it and experiment things, but don't, you know, worry and don't put yourself down if you end up um, removing a few items and, and even complete rides or buildings. It happens. It's an experiment. It's all about trying uh, different things in the game to try and get it right, really. Um, so, yeah, don't uh, don't be harsh on yourself if you see yourself removing buildings and stuff and rides uh, or even full areas. You know, like I've gone through it in the past. And I know what it's like. So sometimes you'll notice I put something in and uh, i look at it and, and think actually that isn't right it's normally if i start zooming out and looking at it from different angles or like ground level and stuff uh, and i might think yeah that isn't how i wanted it to be or that doesn't look quite right um so yeah that's exactly um what i do sometimes so yeah you know i don't get it right first time i just wanted to sort of clear that up you know that it is a lot of experimenting especially when you're working on something quite big like this Chinese hotel. Um, so yeah, this is coming together really nicely and quite quickly actually. Um, in terms of the amount um, of hours that have gone into this hotel in this uh, episode, you're seeing about three and a half hours worth of uh, gameplay sped up here. So that's how long it took me to uh, to put this together. So um, not too, too long actually, um, but it's very heavily detailed and you'll see that by the end of it. I think that's, uh, you know, a big thanks to these uh, different wall sections and roof pieces that you get um, in the game. It all came with the World's Fair pack uh, and there's some really, really good stuff in that DLC what was released. Um, like It's one of the best ones in my opinion because of all this Asia 
theming that you get. Uh, of course, you can change all the colors. It's fully customizable, so you can make it a Japanese area if you wanted to. But obviously, we're going with the Chinese theme to fit with the Chinese area in the park. Um, so yeah, that's the roof starting to go in on these two side points just here. We've got the main tower in the middle there as well. That would feature uh, a spa inside there. That's the plan. So of course, I'm going to need a name and a story for this hotel. So bear that in mind when you are suggesting it for the next episode. Um, yes, that would have a spa area uh, in the top just there. Uh, there isn't going to be an outdoor swimming pool uh, with this one. Uh, it would feature a, an indoor pool as part of the spa, but obviously I'm not going to be doing the interior um, again to this one. So um, yeah, you've just got to use your imagination and, and pretend that that's there at the uh, at the top. Exactly where I'm working now, actually, that would be a, a spa area. There'd be a little pool there, um, some hot tubs, um, all that sort of stuff. I really like theme park hotels that have got spas built into them. It means you can just have a relax after the park's closed. Uh, Europa Park uh, have, have got a spas in quite a few of their hotels and the one at uh, Hotel Coliseo, uh, absolutely fantastic there. Really nice spa it's open till like 10 o'clock in the evening so when you've been walking around on your feet all day and just want to come back to the hotel and relax, you can just chill out in the spa and it's it's included in the, uh, in the price of your hotel stay. Obviously if you want treatments and extra stuff then yeah you have to pay more for that but if you just want to swim about or go in the steam rooms and uh, the sauna and all that sort of stuff it's included and, and that's a big part of it um, so yeah, we, as you can see, we're using some really nice decorative pieces uh, whilst putting this hotel together. Um, on the top just here, building it up in different layers, of course, so it gets smaller uh, the higher that it goes up. Uh, and by this point, I'd managed to block in um, all of the uh, parts of the white structure that was underneath. Now, like I say, the public areas in this hotel uh, will be very, very similar uh, to that of the Contemporary at Walt Disney World. Uh, that's the famous hotel that's got the monorail that goes through it basically and that's what this is kind of inspired by a little bit inspired by that and a little bit by Ling Bao uh, which is a hotel at Fantasia Land in Germany that's also uh, a Chinese themed hotel and that actually backs onto the park and the Chinese themed area uh, so that's gorgeous on a night and uh, they open it up so you can just walk around the area uh, they've got some music playing, just taking the atmosphere, and it's quite relaxing and a little bit eerie in a way. I actually find the atmosphere at Hotel Lingbao to be a little bit spooky. Like it's a bit of a spooky Chinese theme, and I didn't really want to go with, with that for this one. I wanted to be quite a you know vibrant and happy sort of feel with this one. But yeah, with Lingbao, it's got a very interesting atmosphere. Um, it's actually got a, a rooftop bar, the Dragon's Bar, which is really really nice as well um, in uh, Hotel Lingbao. With this hotel that I'm building here in Planet Coaster, uh, this one's not going to have a rooftop bar. We've got that in the luxury hotel that I built um, two episodes back. So make sure you check that out if you've not seen it. It's the big grand luxury hotel that we did. Uh, this is a very, very different uh, style with this one. But uh, like I say, if it was real, uh, having the sky ride there, the cable car, and of course uh, the monorail passing through it would be a big feature. Uh, there'd be bars and restaurants on the inside and you'd just see the monorail and the cable car sort of passing through the building. Uh, I think it'd have a really nice feel to it. Um, so yeah, that's exactly what it would be like on the interior um, if it was uh, in a real theme park. Uh, and I can't think of a theme park hotel out there that's got a cable car running through it. I can monorails, like I say, but uh, not a, a, a sky ride going through. Imagine like uh, Walt Disney World building a resort and having the new Disney Skyliner um, running through it. That'd certainly be uh, an interesting one, something a bit different, wouldn't it? But uh, yeah, just obviously through the public areas, not through like hotels. Uh, like rooms or corridors or anything like that um, because people want the privacy in a hotel of course but uh, yeah it would pass through the public areas and be a really nice feature um, so but just before I talk about the name and story reveal for the previous set of accommodation that I built, the Spanish mining town, um, just thought I'd uh, tell you a little bit more about what we're doing here in terms of the features on this hotel. So we've got these really nice doors. Uh, of course, they'd be able to open up uh, and they'd have a like a piece of balcony on the inside. Uh, I'm, don't, I'm not planning on adding the balcony on the outside. Uh, it would be on the inside of those and you'd be able to open up your doors uh, and the sort of swing out and you'd already have it built on the other side of that. 
Um, so it's not really a balcony that you could step out onto, uh, but it's in your room, you know, and you could open the like French door style, you know, and, and, and it'd look out over the uh, the nice views. Uh, we've got standard rooms going in here as well that are just the normal um, windows there that you can see going in. No balconies, nothing like that. Just standard doors that would open. Uh, and that would actually be the bar and restaurant in this hotel, directly above the lobby area. Uh, and you can see you've got them beautiful panelled windows that, again, are part of the World's Fair pack. Really, really nice stuff what came out in that DLC. Uh, and I'm using all these different window uh, sets and stuff for that. Um, now, some of these are actually designed to be interior walls and windows, but I think, you know, they fit the, the outside just as good, to be honest. Like, just because it says in the game, oh, this is for use on the interior, um, doesn't mean that you have to use it for that at all. Uh, I think that it, it, it works quite nicely, yeah, using it on the outside, to be honest. Obviously, some parts it wouldn't work, but um, I think for this, it, it tends to work quite well. Um, so yeah, you see I'm around the other side now, putting in all the windows and uh, decoratives on there uh, before we start to add some more um, finishing touches to this hotel. Um, but it's coming together really, really nicely, isn't it? Like lots of windows, lots of different styles. We've got the brown, the green, the yellow, the red, lots of different colours um, going on. Uh, and extended into this gold, the bronze colour um, that we're putting in with some of the roofing details here uh, that looks really nice. I love them uh, roof pieces. Uh, like I say, this uh, World's Fair DLC is absolutely awesome um, what Planet Coaster released. It's a shame they've stopped releasing stuff for the game now. It, uh, you know, it seems like a lot of their focus now has gone into Planet Zoo and, uh, and other stuff what they've been working on. Maybe we might see a Planet Coaster 2 at some point in the future. You know, there was certainly talk of that being developed, but um, it is a shame in my opinion that, yes, I know Planet Zoo's come out and, you know, I have played a little bit of Planet Zoo. It's not something that I'm going to be doing a series on because I just can't get into it like a can planet coaster you know it's just not quite for me if you know what i mean but don't get me wrong it's a great game what they developed it's just i'll be sticking to planet coaster uh, it's just a shame really that they've stopped you know releasing stuff for planet coaster now it's kind of all like died off a little bit for them uh, i still think they could have released some more rides and uh, and dlc you know because i'd have certainly bought them and i know a lot of people would but yeah it's a shame that they've really stopped creating new stuff for this and you know as much as you can make your own things to put in there there's people that don't like to do that and i'm that sort of person i, I was the same with roller coaster tycoon too i like using stuff what the park uh, what the games have officially released in my parks uh, what frontier have made i don't really like putting in my own custom stuff um you know i'd, I'd like the official stuff in the official series um so yeah, I think it's a shame that more stuff isn't being released by them, to be honest. But, you know, some, we might see some more in the future, who knows? But um, yeah, it's just a shame that they seem to have stopped putting the, the love into the game really now. But, you know, it's one of them things. Hopefully there might be a Planet Coaster 2 on the way at some point, who knows? Uh, anyway, let's uh, talk a little bit then about what we built in the last episode. And that was, of course, that Spanish-themed accommodation, the budget accommodation, but actually it turned out really nice. Very, very well-themed. Uh, and that's the beauty of these three different sets of accommodation that we've got at Atlas Adventure. They're all very, very different. A British-themed grand hotel. We've got this Chinese um, hotel um, with very sort of eccentric style going on. Like there's, you know, a lot of details. Like the British hotel is quite sort of plain compared to this. Like I know that's the the what I wanted to go for in terms of you look at it and it's more of a big manor house than anything. Um, but this is full of details on here. Uh, it's certainly the, the one of the most heavy themed hotels I've built um, in the game. And this will be a step up from staying in the Spanish lodges, um, but not quite as luxurious a finish as what you're going to get in the uh, British themed hotel so uh, anyway I've got a fantastic name and fantastic um, storyline for this one uh, now of course I mentioned there is this old Spanish mining town and uh, YouTube user Coaster Atlas has come up with a brilliant um, suggestion um, for this one and the uh, name of the accommodation what we built um, will be called Miner's Keep so something completely different like there was a lot of really really good names but for me miners keep just really um came out there uh, and the storyline behind this uh, goes as follows so um three spanish amigos were on a walk home until they found themselves on the wrong trail 
they end up in a town of wonder, minery and exploration. It had looked abandoned and deserted for a while, and the three amigos were willing to revive it from its crust. The three amigos be became miners themselves and ended up leading the town to be the best minery in all of Spain. Uh, after your long day in the mines, sit back in a cozy bed with a complimentary wine and live like the three amigos. Just don't forget to bring a pickaxe. Uh, so there we go. Thanks for that, Coaster Atlas. Uh, brilliant name. And that's Miner's Keep uh, for the name of the accommodation. Uh, there was there was so many great name suggestions, a lot of really good Spanish names and stuff that I really liked. But there was something about that that was very, very different uh, and what you probably wouldn't expect. So uh, I thought that fit in really, really nicely nicely so once again thank you for that one and uh, thank you for all of your suggestions but uh, yeah there's still going to be a couple more opportunities in this series um, to have your name uh, put into my park and all you need to do is quite simply comment below on this video with a name for this Chinese themed hotel a very oriental style it's got a spa inside there it's going to have some Chinese gardens that we're going to be working on shortly as well around the exterior of the hotel um, so yeah yeah, you know, let me know what you think the storyline and the name should be for this one. You know me, I'm always open to anything uh, with name suggestions and theme ideas. Um, so yeah, get them coming down below and I look forward to uh, reading them. I read each and every comment on all the videos on Theme Park Worldwide, uh, but especially on Planet Coaster, it's really nice to see a lot of long, detailed comments and replies. And you guys are absolutely fantastic. You've got brilliant imaginations and you come up with some really, really good stuff. Uh, and I love putting it into my parks. I really, really do. As you can see then um, from the hotel, I'm just adding a few finishing touches to the building itself. We've got some lanterns going in there, um, some little dragon statues we've put on there. And uh, this is the entrance area. We've got a front and a back entrance going in um, to this one. Um, much like the British Hotel, we've got access out the back to uh, more transportation. Uh, and at the front, uh, the car park isn't directly going to be there. It's going to be off to the left-hand side. So we need to make sure that we uh, think about that and put that into uh, consideration as well. So, uh, talking of the car park, that's going in now, just using standard flooring tiles there, uh, just to put the car park in. Uh, and it's going to be a tarmac car park. Car park. Going to use red tarmac for the spaces, um, similar um, to what I did for the British Hotel, how I used grey to fit in with that. And um, There's red tarmac, as you can see, in the background for this one. The little building that I've put in here will actually be a point where, um, it, you know, you're entering into this Chinese garden this Chinese world however um, there's also a reason for it being there like I say this hotel is actually going to function in the game as a real hotel the Spanish accommodation isn't so that is literally hiding a point where the path actually disconnects so people can still walk around this garden in the game uh, of course if it was a real park it would all be open to, to people but uh, I didn't really want guests going over to the Spanish area and getting out the way and stuff like that and you know the, like there's no other rides over there or transportation so uh, you know I wanted them to stay away from it in the game purposes um, so yeah that's literally a, a little building and the path just separates in there stops people um, carrying on to walk round decided to extend the lake a little bit here that isn't something what I had a, it was in my original plan to be honest um, but I thought why not like you know the paths have gone in how I wanted to let's uh, put some more water in round the back there so we extended the lake out uh, put in some smaller um, little lakes here as well but they're going to have some nice uh, water features on there um, just to help create more of an immersive atmosphere out the back of this hotel uh, and like I say really think about uh, everything that I'm doing especially over the next few minutes when it comes to coming up with your story and name ideas because uh, like I say I love reading through them and seeing what you guys come up with and just doing in some changes of the terrain uh, all around there now as well just to make sure that uh, that looks good and how we want it to and uh, like I say the car park's just off to the well the right hand side if you're looking at it from the front the left hand side if you're looking at the hotel from the back um, so yeah we just need to have a path there that connects the car park to the hotel with the main front entrance and it's entirely up to guess what they want to do when they arrive they can either take the shorter way uh, in through the front entrance or they could walk through the Chinese garden past the lake 
and in through the back way. Doesn't matter, it all leads into the lobby. Obviously the back way uh, is a little bit longer, um, but it's a bit more scenic, isn't it? You know, instead of walking next to the main road. So it's, you know, it's up to the guests. They can pick and choose and, and have that journey, you know, to, to start their adventure. Uh, the next part was putting in all the landscaping and this is what I spent about half an hour of real time doing. I've of course sped it up and just um, cut and cropped little bits here because you don't want to see half an hour of me placing trees and shrubbery. Um, it'd be a bit boring wouldn't it? Um, but yeah, so literally loads and loads of planting. We've got these nice red plants going round, trees, bushes, shrubs, all sorts of stuff going in just to block it in nicely. You know me, I think planting is really important. Love these bamboo style plants uh, that I'm putting in around the uh, front of the hotel there. Uh, they seem to fit really nicely. They're the red plants that I'm on about that I'm just placing now. They go nicely into it all and just help immerse you into it all a little bit more. Of course, I copy and pasted all of these stations um, for the uh, boats. However, I decided um, to change this one up again, much like I did with the Spanish one. I kept the same shape and everything, but I've changed the roof pieces and the sides just to fit it in. So this would be the Chinese hotel station um, for the boat transportation. And like I say, you know, if this was a real theme park, it would be fantastic in terms of all your options for transport. You'll have a monorail station, you'll have a cable car station, You'll have a boat uh, dock out the back and you'll also have pathways that connect round to the park. So you got all sorts of uh, options if you're staying at this hotel in terms of transportation. I uh, just copy and paste in a couple of little buildings there. They're literally just little entrance portals that I've built. Um, you know me, I like to separate things off nicely. And uh, yeah, I thought that some nice little uh, Chinese uh, entrance portals with the lanterns on there. Bit of a different roofing style away from the sort of temple feel, uh, but still adding some uh, dragons on there to fit with the whole sort of Chinese culture. Uh, I thought they'd work really nicely. So we've got one there. Uh, I actually copy that now uh, and put a couple of others uh, in as well uh, just really nice just for separating the hotel and the pathways just so people know that they're entering into that chinese garden and that chinese world that uh, we're trying to uh, create just here uh, but there you go as you can see we are coming towards the end of the episode and you know what i think it's coming together really really well um like i say you know in terms of this series we are coming towards the end of it but there's still a couple more episodes coming up of course we're going to open the park again uh, and see how it copes in terms of with people in there see how my pc copes that's going to be a laugh isn't it and um, to see how it copes when it's full of people um, but obviously i'm gonna to have to heavily restrict how many go in the park but we'll see how it goes and the final thing that i've done and what would normally be the first but this time it was the last was just putting in the rooms so they're the different hotel rooms we can set prices uh, the facilities and all that kind of stuff standard or luxury rooms and uh, yeah also with that we just need to connect them up to the lobby reception building which is the one that's got the red uh, picture on the side you can see it just there uh, so i just kind of highlight all of those now uh, copy them together and uh, there you go hey presto they're all connected up to the hotel and you know it gives you a bit of an idea what the real interior would be like there if it was a real hotel you you know you pass through there there'd be restaurants and all sorts of stuff you know with the sky ride and the monorail uh, all going over the top some of the finishing touches now just on the outside just putting in these nice dragon lanterns all the way around the uh, footpaths just there um, just to make sure that we've got enough lighting of course for guests to uh, walk around there and like I say it's nice because you can walk around to the Spanish accommodation which is great um, you know I've kept them nicely connected um, which is, is looking really good but there we go here's a couple more promotional shots you know as I like to call them the monorail going through the sky ride in action and um, the beautiful uh, lake and waterfront area that we've got the boat transportation making its way out and this gorgeous hotel at the back so uh, get commented on this video with your name suggestions themes story ideas um, for this one I look forward um, to reading them and of course picking one out in episode 28 and uh, come and tune into the next episode uh, here of Let's Play Planet Coaster Project Globe Explorer where I'm going to be making some more finishing touches uh, before I open the park to the public um, but there we go really nice aerial views there just 
to show you uh, the hotel and how it fits in with the other um, two sets of accommodation that we've got. And finally, an overview of the park. Isn't it lovely? Uh, but I'm Sean Sandbrook. Thank you very much for watching. And that means it's time to cue those credits. See you later.